It's not just the outside, it's also what's inside that counts. And we're gonna find out in this episode of Airsoftology Reviews. So this is kind of a one, two, three punch of a review. We're not just talking about the gun. We're talking about some other stuff that's going on here. In fact, this, uh, I'll hit the gun first, is the Stoner LMG, the Knight's Stoner LMG, and it's distributed by Z-Shot, if you guys didn't know. It's actually OEM by Classic Army, so that's who makes the gun itself and the guts, but it's not something you can pick up through Classic Army, which a lot of people think you can. In North America, this is, like I said, licensed through Knight's, and because of that, it is through Z-Shot. And in fact, I've owned one of these for almost two years now. From almost the day it came out, I've had one in my personal collection, and in fact, never reviewed it. But when I had my chance to get a hold of one of these with some special modifications, I jumped at the chance. All right, so let's talk about the gun real quick because this is a gun I know very, very well. This is one I didn't even have to look at externally or parts or anything. So this is the, like I said, the Stoner LMG. It's kind of the perfect hybrid between a lightweight support gun and an M4, uh, but it definitely falls in that support gun category. Uh, big, large heat shield guard here in the front, triple rails on the outside top and the sides. You do get these rail covers here on it. You've got a nice long M4 length outer or inner barrel to go up underneath there, a uh, fixed front sight, which can be removed if you guys don't want to do it, flip up rear sight. Again, this gun is almost all metal with like the hand guards and the fore grip, which by the way is included too, and here being polymer. 14 millimeter counterclockwise threads, which means you can put a suppressor on it to go for that cool look. In fact, that's the way I have my other one set up already. You do have all the cool dust covers and metal bits and all that, but it doesn't really matter. You, uh, When you get it brand new, like this one here, you have the night sticker on it. I peeled mine off and, and ran with it. And like I said, it is classic army, so it's made in Hong Kong. Logo here on the side, fully licensed trademarks, uh, regular M4 grip, safe and fire, meaning that there's no semi because this is a support gun. Forget the semi-auto, it's wide open. Stock is here on the back, it's kind of a wire thing. I think there's probably the only thing I have to complain about the gun itself is the stock. It's a little lacking, but it's just like the real one, so I can't complain about it. I just I just kind of wish there was something different or an ad adapter tube to put a different one on here. It does go back into place, and if it does give you a little trouble moving forward and back, you have a set screw here to lock it in. Across the top, you do have rail space. You have a little bit here in the back and some here in the front, so you can run whatever you need here, like I said earlier, or put optic back here, which is kind of the perfect position. Positioning. You can also ditch the stock. It's actually a little clip here and slide that sucker off if you want to go stockless, which I don't know why you would. Maybe vehicle mount this thing, but personally, I would definitely leave that stock on. Rounding it out, you do have this box mag. It's a little light on the rounds. That's probably one of my biggest complaints about this gun is 1,200 rounds. It's a big box mag for that. It uses like an elevator system, which is pretty cool, and it's really robust. I have three of these box mags, and I've had them for a long time and used the crud out of them, and have not had one fail. So I really think Classic Army does a fantastic job of building a solid box mag. I just wish they would give you a few more rounds in this one. I'm not sure why they kind of skimped on it, because when you do play at Milsom events, you're limited to the number of box mags you have, and going up against a saw, you're gonna be limited on ammo, like almost half their ability per box mag to carry. But the trade-off is how light this gun is. I mean, you can one-hand it like I have here and not have any issue, which I think is great. So for long-term use, this thing definitely wins in the weight category. All right, internals. Normally you get all the classic Army parts, the wire cut gears, the 18 to one gear ratios, and all the good stuff, right? Not in this one, because this is a special one from the guys at Z-Shot, this one has the Inferno system in it for HPA and a storm regulator. So it is a fully self-contained HPA beast. And I think for me, HPA, probably one of the best shining spots for HPA is either indoor in the Speedsoft arena, playing up close and tight, or when you're out playing Milsim games, the support gun roll. I think it just, that's the sweet spot for me for HPA, it just works. So this one's pretty neat, because this is the, actually in here, the Inferno G2 system in here. So it's actually very efficient on air. Uh, it's fully adjustable and drops right into the mech box itself. So it actually goes into the shell itself, it fits in here. This is a specialized mech box in here. It's not a version two because it is built as a support gun. So if you do want to have the AEG version, it is incredibly robust. You're not gonna have any trouble with breaking a mech box shell, that is for sure. But if you move to this one, You've got it. You still keep the quick change spring system, but you don't need that if it's HPA. But if you guys want the uh, actual AG version, I wanted to tell you about that as well. Then of course you ditch the motor in here, 
The storm regulator lives in the motor grip, so everything is now self-contained in here. And I don't have a hose hooked up right now, but you'll see in my live fire where I actually do some full auto burst testing to show you rate of fire. This thing can rip, and of course it's fully adjustable. If you wanna have an insane rate of fire, you can do it. Mine's set pretty healthy. It's, it's not overly done, and the FPS is kind of dialed back for efficiency. Depending on what your saw limits are, if you wanna take this thing to 450 and go to a big Milsom event, you can do that, which usually North American or United States Milsom events is 450 feet per second, with a 0.2 gram BB, so you can turn it up and down. That's the beauty of this. And because the regulator's right here, you can run a standard line, a full pressure line right out and be able to hook it up, very similar to what you see in a Tipman. So you can have a very affordable line, have the tanks in the back and good to go, and not worry about the regulator and extra space, which means you can fit these tanks a lot easier back in your packs when you're running big games or even in small fields. And now set rate of fire. I wanna show you here before we get to the chrono, that's right. Now that's the actual solenoid just going like crazy. That's what this one is set at. This is a absolute support gunner's dream. It lays down the fire. It's very efficient on the air. In fact, you're gonna get a lot of shots out of a tank. I mean, a ton of shots. And like I said, because it's all fully integrated with the regulator, I like that everything's self-contained. All you have is just this little quick disconnect sticking out of the bottom of the grip. So I think this package here, fully installed, ready to go, is kind of for me, like I say, that's support gunner's dream. And when you look at the chrono numbers, you're gonna see it too. Like I said, the numbers do vary because you know it's fully adjustable, but this is the setting that I've gone with for this. So I have the ability to to play with it and not running numbers is too nuts, but you can dial it up or dial it down to your liking. So I wanna ask you guys a question. What do you think about this? I, I'm not gonna lie, I mean, having one of these guns, like I said, I've never reviewed it because it's my personal gun. I probably should have by now. I've been a big fan of the Stoner. I've thought it's a fantastic gun. I've really put it through its paces. Like I said, it is two years old and still is running. I have not done any modification to it at all. In fact, I used it at Operation Ironclad. In fact, I ended up lending it out to Miguel uh, from Evic from like most of the game. He ended up running this thing really hard and I've run it way bunch since. And it's not had a lick of trouble at all, but in the HPA form, it really just comes alive. I'm looking to get this thing back out on the battlefield. I, I kind of miss that support gunner role, but I wanna know what you guys think. Do you like playing the support gunner? Do you think HPA is perfect for the support gun role? Or do you have other thoughts about HPA? Are you a fan or maybe not? Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, guys, if you wanna learn more about this gun, as always, I'm gonna have a link in the description below so you can go check it out. So until next time, go out. Play some airsoft, have some fun, but no matter what you do, run some HPA support guns and call your freaking hits.